Well, one cut of the tree out of the forest. One cut of the tree out the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen. Uh huh. With the net. Uh huh. They deck it with silver and with gold. And they what? They deck it with silver. And they with decorate gold. this tree. Yes. With silver and gold. And what they do with it? They fasten it with nails. And with they they get a stand for it. Yes. They don't want this tree to fall. Yes. <laughs> and they wait till around after Thanksgiving. And they go and say, well, let, let me go now and hurry up and get my tree before they run out. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, oh. Stubborn people. People who have no understanding. Praise God. Don't have no understanding to what you're doing. No Bible for the Christmas tree. But Jeremiah spoke against it. All you got to do, well, it don't say Christmas tree, but it say decorated tree. Amen. They decorated with silver and gold. You don't decorate the tree today with silver and gold, but you put the trinkets to make it beautified yes. like silver and gold. Yes. Oh, I know you beautified. That's why you put it in front of your window and open up the curtains. Amen. Everybody can and you put the lights on. Everybody can see my tree. But what happened after January the 1st? You take that tree that used to be so beautiful. And you brought it in for this festival. No Bible for it. That's a heathen custom. Oh, but I'm doing it for God. Hey, how you going to do it for God what God said don't do? Apostles didn't do it for God. And the prophets spoke against it. Hallelujah. I'm teaching you the truth. Praise God. What was that? Get back to uh, Revelation. 14 chapter again. I got to clear this up. I want everyone to have understanding. Everybody can't teach the truth of God's Amen. word. Amen. It takes a prophet of the Lord. Amen. And God only sent one prophet at a time. Check it out. Amen. Amen. Jehoshaphat uh, was going to battle with Ahab. He said, before we fight, maybe we better inquire of the Lord. Amen. And Ahab said, well, I done already prayed to this prophet over here. Jehoshaphat said, well, ain't there a prophet in the house of the Lord yeah. that we may inquire of? Yeah. Praise God. And, and Ahab said, yeah, there's one. There's one, but he don't like me. Hallelujah. He never told me something good. Nobody told you the truth. Hallelujah. Sometimes the truth ain't always good, but if it's the truth, it ought to be good anyhow. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Praise God. I believe we was in Babylon. Read that again. At verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath and of fornication. All nations. Show me a nation right today. Well, women don't put on lipstick, makeup, and earrings. Show me one nation. I bet you, you I bet you, you're you going to really have to go far. <laughs> Born in your world, wherever. You got, to, you got to go a long way. Amen. Hallelujah. To find a woman who don't decorate her face Amen. and put on jewelry. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they may not put them in the ears, but they put them in the lip. Uh, woman go to Baptist church and she got earrings on, but if she put it in her lip and her nose, oh, I wonder what's wrong with sister. Well, what's the difference if you put it in the nose and the ear? Well, what's the difference? God said he took away the jewelry. Took away the eyebrow chain. Didn't he say so? Hallelujah. He took it away from him. Hallelujah. Read. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. And receive a mark in his forehead or his hand. Now, they're going around telling people the mark of the beast is a microchip that they're getting ready to put under your skin. That's a lie. The mark of the beast is a psychological mark that is in your forehead, which means your mental thought process, and in your hand, which means the action of your body after the mind tells you what to do. I use an example. If you want a glass of water, the mind tell you you're thirsty, but the mind can't pick up the glass. Amen. So the thought to do wrong comes in the mind, and then the body makes the action. So God said the mark of the beast on the forehead or in the hand. 
which means you're going to mentally accept it and then put it into fruition by the actions of your body that was already instituted in the mind. Amen. This is the mark of the beast. And we today have to be very careful because the Antichrist is the mark of the beast or exemplifies the mark of the beast today. And we got to be very careful that we don't entertain or accept the mark of the beast. Amen. If we accept the mark of the beast, then there is no redemption yes. except the person repents. Amen. But a lot of times when you accept the mark, there is no more sacrifice for the sin because there is no repentance. You have taken on a reprobate status. Amen. A reprobate person thinks they're right and in actuality they're wrong. Amen. Paul said, praise God over in that letter, uh, Romans, yes. he gave them over to a reprobate mind. Yes. To do those things which were not convenient. He later on goes into homosexuality, but he said to do a sin, to think that you are right, you are reprobate. And we got to understand, we're not going to be reprobate here. And nobody going to be reprobate that you like. I'm going to teach you too hard. I'm going to preach to you too hard. Hallelujah. You can't be reprobate. I'll get that reprobate out of you. Hallelujah. Praise God from God. He's a wonderful singer. We are talking about the highway of holiness that a man must follow as he's to be saved. First of all, before you can be saved, you have to first know what God's plan of salvation is. And his plan of salvation is for everybody. Give me 1 Corinthians, first chapter. His plan of salvation was for everybody. Let everybody speak the same thing. Yes, Lord. You got to do the same thing. You got to live the same by the same standard. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren. I beg you, church. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the highest authority that an apostle can use. Yes, Lord. That you all speak the same thing. That you all speak the same thing. Is that what he said? Yes. And be. And that you be. There'll be no division among you. No division among you. You've got to speak the same thing that there be no separation Amen. among you. Am I running out of time? All right. Listen. There's no such thing as one church baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Another church baptized in Jesus' name. Another church don't believe in baptism at all. Just shake somebody's hand. All of that is, 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 is nothing. You have to be baptized according to the apostles' doctrine, whom God chose and gave instruction. Acts 1st chapter, verse 1 and 2, the former treatise, have I made oath the office, for all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. And to such a time he was caught up, at that time he gave commandment to the apostles whom he had chosen. God chose the apostles and gave them instruction, and they put the instruction in book form. This is why we have the doctrine. Doctrine means instructions or teachings. Amen. And it takes an apostle to give you the instruction. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Amen. His plan of salvation was established on the day of Pentecost. Yes. They asked Peter what to do to be saved. Yes. Catholics, they didn't ask Mary. Yes. Yes. Mary was there. Yes. What? Oh, Mary was there? Read it. She had to go to the upper room just like the rest of the apostles. Yes. And she had to wait there until the Holy Ghost came. Yes. Well, if she was divine, why she had to go and wait there until the Holy Ghost came. Mary wasn't divine. Mary was a woman, just like any other woman, but she was a holy woman. We give her, we give her, the, we give her honor for that. But yeah. well, what I'm trying to show you, she had to wait there to receive the Holy Ghost as well as the rest of the apostles and the others that were with them. Now, here's what I'm trying to say. In Acts, the second chapter, Peter was given the authority or permission from God to preach that first message on the day of Pentecost. That's why we call ourselves the Pentecost Church. Amen. 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 Because we are following the apostles' doctrine that was instituted or began on the day of Pentecost. Amen. All right. And he said, they said, Peter, what must we do to be saved? And Peter said, repent and be baptized. How many? Everyone. How many? Everyone. Not some of you. Everyone. Not most of you. Every one of you yes. in Father, Son, Holy Ghost. No. Wonder why Peter didn't say Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen. Because Peter knew the name of the Father was Jesus, the name of the Son was Jesus, and the name of the Holy Ghost was Jesus. So he baptized them in the name 